Welcome to the channel. In this video, I'll be going over upgrading the Odin 5 F3 to Marlin 213. In my review video of this printer, I spoke about a few things that I didn't like. One was the fact that I couldn't tell what temp the hot end or bed was without having to dig for it. The other was the fact that it didn't have automatic bed leveling. Now I'm not changing the hardware in any way, so I won't be adding a probe, but I did add manual mesh bed leveling to the firmware. As a bonus, this upgrade lets us print a bit faster as it utilizes Marlin's new input shaping. I've uploaded the firmware and several associated G-code files to my GitHub page, and I'll add links to everything in the description. So let's get started. First, you need to grab the firmware from the GitHub page and rename it to robin underscore nano35.bin and place it in the root of your SD card. Put the SD in your printer and power it on. Once you've powered on your printer, you should see a screen that looks something like this. Just give it a few minutes to do its thing. And then we should be greeted by a new Marlin screen. Now that we're in Marlin, we need to initialize the firmware. So under configuration, advanced, initialize EEPROM, say yes. You should do this anytime you flash new firmware. Now all our settings are brand new. So PID tuning is the first order of business here. So let's go to configuration, advanced settings, temperature, and then PID auto tune E1. I print at 200, so let's do that. Change it to whatever you normally print at, and then give it a while for it to heat up and go through its cycles. So now that our hot end is done, we need to go on and do the bed. One thing to note, you might get a thermal watchdog reset. I actually got that twice. Um, just reset the printer, turn it off, turn it back on, try again. It just the bed is heating up so incredibly slow that Marlin freaks out. But a pit tune will fix that. So let's go to settings. Configuration, advanced settings, temperature, and PID auto-tune bed. I'm normally at 50, so that's good for me. Again, change it to whatever you normally print at, and then give it a bit to heat up. Now, like I said, if you get a watchdog reset, it's okay. Just power cycle it, come back in and do it again. Uh, this bed is just with the default settings. It, it takes forever for this thing to heat up. It took me, I think, like six minutes the first time I printed with this thing to get it up to temperature. I mean, it was just ridiculously slow. But this will sort that out, and you'll see a dramatic improvement. Um, it takes like a minute now for everything to heat up. So now that we have both of those done, we need to go and actually save our settings. 
I'm fairly sure that Marlin has already done that, but let's just do it again. Under configuration, all the way at the bottom, store settings. And now we can move on. So before we move on, we need to warm up our hot end and clean off our nozzle as we're going to do bed leveling. So make sure you get that thing really good and clean. There's nothing on it that's going to separate it from the bed. So before we can build our mesh, we need to go ahead and trim the bed. So we're going to want to go to motion. bed leveling down at the bottom bed tramming and then you just it should move to the first left position go ahead and do your thing and then hit the green check mark and that'll move to the next position and do this to all five positions So now I'm actually checking, I'm using a feeler gauge here that's 0.1 millimeter and then adjusting accordingly. Then hit next point on the screen. And you want to feel a little bit of drag. Same if you were using paper, I just think feeler gauge is better. And the goal here is to be able to do the entire bed without having to adjust something. Now this is set for five points so that you can see what the center is. Obviously you can't really adjust for the center. If it's a little loose, that's okay. If it's a little tight, that's okay. I mean, you don't want it a, a giant gap there. You don't want it so that you can't get the filler gauge in it. Then you, you've got all of your knobs too tight. But go around the entire thing several times until you don't have to adjust anything. So now that we're done with our tramming, we want to hit the X for next point. And now we actually want to hit up and go to level bed. This is how we generate our mesh. We'll let the printer home and then it will tell us to click here. And it should move to our first point. And when it's there, we're going to do the exact same thing we did while tramming. We're going to put our gauge underneath the nozzle and we will move it up or down to where we feel a little bit of drag. And then when it's where we like it, we will hit our check mark. And then it'll move to the second point. And we're going to do this for all nine points. So like we did with tramming, we're going to put our gauge underneath until we can feel that little bit of drag. But it's important to note, we do not want to touch the knobs, the adjustment knobs on the bed at this time. We're just raising or lowering the nozzle via the controls. Then our second point, and the exact same thing. Raise or lower the nozzle till we feel that little bit of drag. And then to the next point. And we'll continue doing this until we go through all of the nine points. And then this will build a mesh of what our bed looks like. You know, you can get a visualizer, an octoprint, or inside of a mainsail to actually see what it looks like. So now that we have our bed mesh built, we're back in Cura under the Ender 3 profile since there isn't one for focus. Under extensions, auto tower, they have several for testing, you know, the level of your bed. We're gonna print one of those out. I'll also put the G code up on the GitHub site 
This will show us how good a job we did with building our mesh. So this printed out great, but if you do have to edit your mesh, this is index zero, this is index one, and this is index two for X, and for Y, this is index zero, this is index one, and this is index two, just in case you have to edit your mesh. Okay, now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's move on to input shaping and calibration of it. This is the Marlin website. And again, I'll have links for all this stuff in the description. But here, this basically tells us what we need to do. And they have instructions for Prusa Slicer, which I'll be using. But we need to take this entry that they have and put it in our after layer change inside of Prusa Slicer. All right, so this is the model that they want you to slice up. Again, I've got all the settings done in Prusa Slicer here. This is at 2000 acceleration and the speed is at 150 millimeters per second. And I'll have the G-code up on the GitHub page so you can just download that. I'll also put my Prusa uh, profile up there for this printer as well. But let's go ahead and print this guy out. So now that we have the model done, you can't really see it in the camera, but we're looking for ringing and it, it's kind of hard to actually see it, to be honest. But I've measured it per their instructions from the bottom to where our ringing stops. We get 30 millimeters for Y. And then the same here, we get 25 millimeters for X. Now, again, this is done at 2000. Uh, acceleration. I tried it higher than that, 2500, and it just doesn't work. Um, so that's about, you might be able to try 2250, but I think 2000 is a safe number for this printer. So now that we actually have our measurements from the instruction page, we need to go to the calculator that TH3D has provided. Or we could do the math, but I say we go to the calculator. But on here, it's pretty simple. We just have to input the measurements that we took for X and Y before. And then they will tell us what our frequencies are. Now we have to take that and put them into Marlin. So now we're back at Marlin. We need to go to settings, configuration, advanced settings, and then input shaping. And then here we're going to change our defaults for X to the value we got off of the TH3D website. Save it. Now we'll go to Y. Again, input the values that we got from there. Now we want to go and actually save these values. Store settings. 
Good deal. Now we just need to do a test print. Okay, so this is our test block and it printed pretty good. And I printed one of these in the review. The big difference though is that this one took nine minutes whereas the other one took 17. So it's quite a bit faster now. Let me know how it works out for you. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you did, like and subscribe.